All right, second and final analysis of the day comes to us from Seth Edwards, who is 17 years old and lives in Barbados. So uh, we get some of the international guys sending some stuff in now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, he's um, under 20-year-old PR with the 1.75 is uh, 49.76 meters, which is 163 feet 3 inches. And his under 18 PR with a 1.5 kilo discus was set in 2016 um, is 153 feet, uh, well 153.73 feet, so about 153 feet, seven and a half, eight inches, whatever that is. All right. So what we're doing here is we're taking a look. Um, I love the fact that even though the discus got heavier, you're throwing it farther. I think that is a very, very good sign that what you are doing um, is working very well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also like the fact that, um, you know, you're just out here throwing, man. You almost hit the damn house on this throw, which is awesome. Um, let's see here. Watch this. He almost hits that. It looks like you're going to put it right through the roof. Like, I wonder what's going through your head at this point. Like, please don't hit the house. Please don't hit the house. Oh, thank God I didn't hit the house. But we're going to take a look at this, and um, I know you've got uh, you've got to add a couple meters to this throw to get to sort of the next level of competition for where you live. And um, it says here, I'm not sure. I think Pan Am Games is what it said in your email. So that's what you're trying to get to, or the, or the Junior Pan Am Games. So let's take a look at the big thing for me as I took a look at your video was. You're really long, dude. You got a lot of length to your arm. <clears throat> You've got a lot of length. And what I want you to do is I want you to go and watch the other analysis that I did today of a guy by the name of Dan Stone. Because what Dan did um, in the back of the circle, Dan is tall and long like you are. So all the same stuff is going to apply to you as did with Dan in the back of the circle. I want that right foot off the ground here. But you can see your right foot doesn't come off the ground until here. And see how you got that pirouette crisscross position? Let's work on getting the right foot off the ground earlier. So what's that going to do? Well, if the right foot gets off the ground earlier, it's going to get through the circle earlier. It's going to speed everything up. It's going to make the throw more efficient. The other thing that you do is instead of bringing the foot around and keeping the foot low to the ground, again, making a shorter racetrack, you bend your knee and you bring your heel all the way up here by your butt. So see how your right heel is up in the air and the right heel is over your like over your hips almost? Now you've got to wait for that foot to come all the way back down. So the Mac Wilkins, low, left, and long. Keep that right foot long and outside, low toward the ground. Don't do this high lift and kick kind of thing. I mean, at this point, you should be driving through the circle, getting ready to drive through the circle right about here, and you've got to wait all this extra time for that to happen. Just like Dan in the last video, see how your right foot is reaching, and you get in this kind of spread eagle position here? See how the right foot's reaching? I need you to get out of the back of the circle. Don't reach like you're trying to step over a big puddle. I want you to drive over that puddle. So drive over that puddle. Get off the ground in the back. Now, Dan in the last analysis had an issue with not getting his left foot down. It looks like here you've got, it's tough to tell, but it looks like here you've got a pretty good heel-toe relationship. I would keep that. But this is where a lot of your throw <clears throat> starts to break down a little bit and where the issue is seen. So the issue to show you is that. See how you're really just bent and twisted and crooked. Your head's looking up into in the sky. You've got this big curvature. Your hips are facing one way and you're kind of not standing up straight you're just you look like you're someone took you and just twisted you and trying to make a pretzel out of you 
We don't want that. We want you standing up nice and tall and strong and powerful at the end. This is good, but it's not powerful. I mean, you're getting your hips forward, which is great, but it's just not a powerful position. So here's what I want you to focus on. It looks like from this angle, your feet are landing in a good position. It looks like you haven't really over-rotated into the left side of that circle. So it looks like everything here is lined up pretty well. What I want you to focus on is extension. I don't want you to jump. I want you to push this circle down into the ground. So I want you to push like you're doing a squat or like you're doing a, a leg press. I want you to push this cement circle down into the earth. Push the earth down. Don't lift off the circle. Push the circle down into the earth. And you can see what starts to happen here is you're opening up that upper body and your legs, your lower body really hasn't done much to this point. So see how your right foot stopped turning? Your right foot's doing a pretty good job of turning after it lands. It starts to turn right about here. Right foot turn. And then as soon as the left foot hits the ground, your, your right foot stops turning. You see that? So your upper body's opening up, you're throwing that left arm, but you haven't turned your right side down the middle. You haven't extended your legs, you haven't extended your hips. So the extension of the lower body never happens. You see that? Your, your right foot's off the ground. The extension of the lower body never happens because you're opening up and throwing with your upper body a little bit too early. So from here, once that left foot lands on the ground, let's work on, all together as one motion, take this right side, so your right hip, your right knee, and your right toe. Let's work on turning this right side down the middle of the sector. So what you're going to do is, you're going to turn your feet, you're going to ground this left heel. So you're going to slam this left heel down to the ground as at the same time that you are turning your toe, your knee, and your right hip down the middle of that sector. So you're going to turn and slam and ground that left heel down to the ground. Then you're going to feel a massive amount of separation a massive amount of stretch. You're going to extend your legs. You're going to try to push all the way through that movement so that your lower body starts to lead the throw and the upper body comes through. I don't want to say as an afterthought, but your upper body comes through after your lower body has turned down the middle and extended fully. So see right here, your upper body's coming through and you still haven't turned. Your foot is facing down the middle and the hips and the knee are facing down the middle here. And look at you're already throwing. So we need to get you to be a little bit more patient and lead with the lower body. Now, along with leading with the lower body, like I said, is extending the lower body. Keeping this right foot on the ground and allowing you to push and get full extension out of your legs. Don't keep this leg bent and lift the foot off the ground. See that? You can't produce any more power at this point. You have very little of your foot touching the ground. Just the tip of your toes are on the ground. You can't deliver and you can't generate power with your legs if your foot comes off the ground. So at this point, you can no longer use this right leg. So I want you to keep your right foot on the ground, grind that right foot into the ground, and then turn your hips, turn your legs, your knees, your toes, down the middle of that sector before your upper body starts to unwind and throw. That's going to create a lot more stretch. That's going to create a lot more separation. 
but it's also going to allow you to use your lower body to stand up and get full extension and be upright when you deliver that discus instead of kind of twisted up and bent over in this weird S pretzel kind of shape position here. We don't want this. We want you standing up nice and tall, nice and strong. You can't stand up nice and tall, nice and strong if your foot's not on the ground. So keep the foot on the ground. Drive your body up into the air. Drive up into that release. Nice and strong, nice and explosive, nice and powerful. Use that lower body first and let the upper body come through second. Remember, the upper body and the lower body are in a race. You want the lower body to always be winning that race. And right here, unfortunately, the upper body starts to win and the lower body never has a chance to catch up. It's a beautiful throw. It's probably, if I had to guess this, I don't know if this is probably 160 feet, 155, 60 foot practice throw. I'm not sure exactly. It doesn't state how far this throw was in this video, but it's a really good throw, but it can be a heck of a lot better if we just get you to keep that foot on the ground, stand up all the way, and fully extend into that release. All right? So good luck, Seth, with qualifying for Junior Pan Ams. Um, keep up the good work. Keep up the, uh, the practicing and, and working hard. Everything is looking really nice. Just really try to work on standing up and being strong at that release.